founder and chief picky editor at House of Bold, where I'm a content marketing consultant working with B2B SaaS companies. I am really excited to be here today to talk you through what's really great and buyer first about the Trainual website. So I'm a slightly familiar with Trainual, but I don't know a ton. I've never used this product. So it's gonna be kind of fun to just explore the website with you and just respond to how well Trainual is doing in terms of you know, the user experience. And we're gonna start with a buyer first best practice, which is how easy is it for me to get a hold of someone on the sales team if I wanna book a demo or if I have a question. So when I land here, uh, it's very easy to see that I can click this white button. They have uh, put it white on a dark background so that really catches my eye quickly. And they have it in the place where I would naturally expect to see it, which is the top right. So I would score them an A on how quick it is to get a demo and speak to the sales team. If I click this button, there's a form. What I like about this, there's only two fields that I need to fill out, so there's not a lot of friction here. They just wanna know how many people are on my team and my business email, which is not a lot of friction at all. So this is great. I would say this is like an A. Um, the second thing that I look for when I'm thinking about whether or not a website is buyer friendly or buyer first, as we say at Novatic, is how easy is it for me or for buyers to get hands on with the product? So yes, I can try it for free. And if I click this button, it opens up a form so that I can start the free seven day trial. But I don't wanna do that. I wanna actually experience the product and I'm looking for a, uh, a demo. So let's see how easy it is for me to find an interactive demo on their website. All right, so I see try it for free, get a demo, get a demo. <clears throat> I always try to click a software image. I never know if it's gonna be clickable enough, now it's not clickable or not. A lot of times nowadays it, it is clickable and it might open a, a demo, but this one doesn't. Now I'm below the hero, so everything above the fold is the hero. Now I'm in the second section. I don't see anything here. Again, it's another get a demo. Now I'm in the third section and I still see another get a demo. And then now I'm in the fourth section <clears throat> and I see here there is a calculator on the left. Oh, here's a play button. So try Trainual for yourself. I am betting that this is an interactive demo. And when I click on it, I'm correct. So Trainual Interactive Tour. This is where I can actually get hands on with the product. They will take me through a flow and I can kind of see um, how I could use it and if it seems like a good fit. So I would say, you know, this wasn't super duper easy for me. Um, you know, it's not terrible. It's not buried at the very bottom. Um, but I would say this is maybe like a B. I would personally, I would love to see it a little sooner because I personally, if I'm interested in a tool and I'm not here just to be like a nosy, you know, looky loo, or I'm not here to, you know, raid the, the resources section. I'm here because I actually want to learn more. I want to be able to get into the interactive demo even sooner. Um, and then we'll see here, sometimes they'll have an interactive demo from the product page or the product dropdown. So here in the menu, I'm not seeing anything that's prompting me to take an interactive demo here. What if I actually go to the product page or click on one of these use cases? Um, here again, get a demo. I can't click this. So it could be I'm um, a little bit quicker and easier. But you know what? I would 100% never go lower than a B anyway because they have an interactive demo, which is for sure buyer friendly like in and of itself, right? So the third criteria that I want to see, so first it was, you know, I want to request a demo or talk to sales. I want to try the product myself. And then, you know, the big one, can I actually afford it? Is this in my budget? So how much does this thing cost? And what are your pricing and packaging? So here, it's very easy to see the word pricing. It's right where I would expect to see it. It's not buried within another um, folder or menu item. And when I click it, 
I can see here that they have four different plans. I can see that if I'm a small business, this is the one that's right for me. I can save money by build, uh, um, paying yearly. And if I scroll down, they also have some optional add-ons, which I love. That's totally buyer friendly because they're not going to get you on the phone thinking, oh cool, it's $249 a year, I can totally afford this. And then they're like, oh, by the way, if you want a custom domain, that's an extra 15. Oh, by the way. And a lot of companies do that. There's like a lot of, oh, by the ways that only you only find out once you've actually taken the time out of your day to get on the phone with a sales rep. And that's definitely not great. So I love that they're completely transparent with all of these add-ons. So then I can know before I even decide to spend my limited time I already know that I can afford it or not. So this is great. I really, I really like a lot of this. So of course, my background is as a writer and editor. So I always look at copy. So the words on the page, as well as the layout and the design and the UX, the user experience. So looking at the homepage specifically and looking at the stuff toward the top of the page, because as we know, any of us who have ever done some heat maps or seen how users interact with our website, we know that a lot of people won't scroll down below the hero or below the second um, section. It's really interesting, right? So there are different types of decision makers. Some people, they want all the details and they are the ones that are gonna click all, you know, scroll all the way down, click a lot of these different drop downs in the menu bar. And then there are people who they just, they like want to go fast. They don't want all these details and they're just not going to scroll down, which means that the homepage hero is the most important section on your website. I want to be able to understand what is this tool and is it for people like me? So again, let's pretend that I've heard of Trainual, which I have, but I don't entirely know what it's about, which is true. So I land on this page and I see easily systemize and scale the way you work. Okay, so then I look at the image next. I actually would, I wouldn't even look at the H2, I would look at the H1, which is the big heading. And then I would look at the software image and see if this added any context for me. So I can see here, there's a to-do list. There is owned by you, completed. Then I see a few, I guess, processes. So sales rep onboarding, I would guess is a process. So it looks like it's 72% complete. Um, I can see there's also an outbound call process. So my first thought is, oh, is this for sales teams? Um, but then I see expense filing policy and I'll say, oh, well, maybe this is something for managers across the organization, or maybe this is something also for HR. So I'm thinking now that it's something that's useful across the entire organization. So I got all of that context just from the image. And now I'm ready to go and continue exploring the hero. I'm one of those detailed people, if you can't tell. Uh, so the H2 says, how? And I love that, because a lot of times the, the copy on the home page doesn't tell you how. It makes all these grandiose promises and scale the way you work and this and that. And it's like, well, okay, how? And they're trying to tell me right above the fold, how? And it says, processes that document themselves. Well, I'm sold because I spent a lot of time in my in-house roles and working as a consultant documenting content marketing processes and it's manual, right? I haven't had a tool like Trainual where I could just do the work and it was documenting it for me. So that sounds great. Um, onboarding and training experiences that save time. SOPs, which is standard operating procedures connected to every role <clears throat> and responsibility. So one thing there like SOP, if anyone that lands on their site already knows what that is, that's fine. Um, otherwise, it could be a good idea to just spell that out for the first mention if there's any thought that certain uh, site visitors would not know that terminology or the acronym. Accountability test and reports all in one place. I like it. So it does tell me quite a bit. The words along with the, the software image really give me a, a feel for, for what it is that this does. Um, so honestly, if it was me and I was landing on this site, I would probably look at this. I would probably next try to find a demo. And then I'd probably look at pricing. And then from there, I might come back to the homepage and I might continue to scroll down and learn a little bit more. That's just how I personally like to interact with websites. Um, 
I guess I can spend another minute um, just looking at the rest of the page if that's helpful for anyone watching. Uh, let's see. So here, painless process documentation. I like here that this is interactive because for me, like the thing that caught my attention is the documentation of the processes automatically. It's been a huge pain point for me for like the last, I don't know, seven years. So that is something that's like really attractive to me. Okay, so I can focus on that. I don't care as much about, you know, operations or accountability. So I like that this is uh, interactive so people can find the information they need. And it doesn't tell me a, a ton, but that's okay. I do see that there are industry proven templates, which is cool because I've, you know, I've created a lot of things of my own that I use with clients from scratch, from experience over the years, but it doesn't mean I have all the wisdom of the crowd. So having these templates would really help a lot, I think. So I like that. And then I also like that there, ha there has um, a wiki because if I'm working to help uh, a marketing function document their processes that they're going to be using cross-functionally, it's definitely helpful to have a central uh, repository um, that anyone can access. And I like that this seems to be something that this tool offers as well. And then I'll scroll down to the third section, easily answer who does what and how, Trainual is like a playbook for your whole business, documentation, delegation, onboarding, all in one platform, everything you need to systemize and scale your team from five to 500. So this seems kind of a little bit like it's beneficial. It's not all speaking to me at all. Like even when I was, you know, in-house, I was never trying to scale my team to like 500. So this speaks, I think, a lot more to someone at the senior leadership level. I was a director when I was in-house. So I was thinking more about the marketing team, not the entire organization um, all the time. So I think that this is definitely speaking to a certain type of user. Could be interesting to maybe try to understand who it is that's accessing the page, maybe have some more uh, tailored information, maybe not you know, just lead with one type of messaging, but that is kind of hard for me to advise on because I'm just here like coming out of the blue. I don't know who their target audience is necessarily. I know that they're probably speaking to a lot of different audiences which is a huge pain point for marketing teams. If you've ever written website copy and you sell a product that is used by more than one uh, persona, it's definitely really hard to, to pick who you're writing to. So my guess, if I had to go with my gut, my guess is that this team chose to speak to someone who's sitting at the top of an organization and thinking about scaling the entire business. And they can do that by building a wiki, documenting processes, working more efficiently. Um, so that, that is my guess. Doesn't really speak to me specifically, but that's okay. They're not selling to me. And then I love this, like I'm big on not only just having like interactive elements on your website and calculators and tools, but what I really like is how much money will training will save us. And I'm going to guess here again that this team, they didn't just pull this, you know, out of the sky and say, hey, we're just going to randomly say this. What typically happens and what you want to do with any calculators or tools on your website is you want to ground those in your objections. So maybe one of the biggest objections that they're trying to overcome is, oh, you know, status quo. I don't need this. Like I'm doing fine. I don't want to spend the money on this thing. So if that's a huge objection, people just think they're doing fine without it or they don't know if it's going to be worth their money. Well, show them how much money will it save you. It's actually not costing you at all because once you implement this and deploy this, it's actually going to save you money. So I really like using tools and calculators as a way to overcome objections and not just using empty, hollow words. So I guess I'll stop there. Um, if you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Uh, reach out. Thank you.